hard time standing up from low couches, avoid sitting in low chairs, or are fearful that you're gonna sit somewhere and not be able to get back up, well, this video is for you. <sighs> Those low toilets can get you up, but you can get stronger and it can become so much easier to go on those public toilets that seem like they're on the floor or be able to go places and not have to worry about these things. So if we haven't met before, my name's Alyssa. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I specialize in helping people with osteoarthritis find hope and adventure again. So I'm really glad you're here. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you two of my favorite movements to help you stand up and down from low surfaces, low chairs, low couches, much easier. Here we go. Now, for this first one, you wanna be sitting in a chair that you can stand up and down from. So we're not starting in the low chairs that we're trying to get better at. We're starting from a chair that you can get up from. A firmer chair, something that's not soft, is going to be better to start with. Also, if you can find a chair that has arms, that can also be beneficial. This is just a patio chair I think I got from Target maybe a couple of years ago, but sometimes those can work best because they have this hard seating surface and a lot of them have arms. You just want to make sure you're also in a chair that doesn't have wheels. I'm going to show you the easier version first, and then we're going to work towards a more difficult version. So with this first one, you're going to sit towards the edge of the chair. You're going to bend your knees as far as you feel comfortable and as far as you can while keeping your heels on the floor. Don't do one of these, try to get them way back, but then your heels are off the floor. You have to keep your heels on the floor. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to stand up fast and I'm going to use my arms to help get a little momentum. I'm going to stand up and then you're going to sit back down. I'm going to try to stand up quickly and that quickly is the key with this one. In order to get up from a low surface, you have to generate strength quickly. That is called muscle power. It's muscle strength plus speed. And I know speed is something that not a lot of you think about in terms of osteoarthritis because you're told to slow down. But for stairs, for getting up from lower surfaces, power is incredibly important. So that's what I want you to think about, adding speed to this movement. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to stand up quickly, stand up quickly, and then come down. I like to use my arms because that gives a little more power and helps with momentum versus if I was just trying to stand up it may not be as quickly. Now, to make this easier, if you're like, well, there's no way I can do that, grab a cushion to put on top of the chair so it raises it up, or go to a bed, a higher surface. I want you to find somewhere where you can be successful with this before we try to make it too hard. You can absolutely also use the arms of the chair. You could still stand up quickly, pushing off the arms. Once you get good at this, once you feel like you can do 10 confidently from the chair that we're starting out in, and you can do it at least for a few days without significant soreness or increase in pain, etc., then we move into adding some weight to this. So I have some dumbbells here. When you're just starting out and haven't been doing weight training very regularly, I would just start out with some lighter weights. Maybe grab threes, fours, fives. Probably fives is where I would stop for now to make sure you can do this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take those two weights and you're gonna hold them up at your shoulders. So I like to just have one head of the weight resting on my shoulders. What we're gonna do now is focus again, we're still trying to stand up quickly. It may feel a little slower, but we're still trying to stand up quickly. As I stand up, I'm gonna press the weights overhead and I'll show you. Stand up, press those weights overhead. Notice that it happens at the same time. It's not I stand up and then I press. It happens at the same time. It's all one fluid motion. What we don't necessarily want is this, and then this, because that's not really insinuating the level of power that we want. 
I want you to drive up from your feet all the way to help you push those weights overhead. Now, as you can see, starting out with weights that are really heavy may not be the best option here. We want to start out with something that's manageable. So you can grab even soup cans or water bottles or something that just adds a little bit of weight first. Now, if you do have a hard time pressing weights overhead, one of the things that I like to do, especially if you have lighter weights, is to be able to stand up and then think about pressing them almost out at a diagonal. That can sometimes be more comfortable if you have problems going overhead or can't necessarily reach that overhead position. What I want you to do is think about power. And again, this one may need to be a little bit lower repetitions, especially if you're using weight. Anywhere between five to eight repetitions a day can be very helpful. Now without weight, you can stay, still stay around that eight to 10 range because they still want it to feel challenging for you, but not too challenging. Don't start in something really, really low because then that's gonna make it so much harder to get better at it. Find something you feel confident in. Practice this. Get really good at this in the chair you feel comfortable in. Then challenge yourself to a little bit lower. Head to that couch that you sometimes have a hard time getting out of and try it there. Try to simply just stand up and drive those arms up. Then you can add weight. So this is the progression to help you get better at getting up from lower surfaces. We have to start thinking in terms of muscle power. Here's number two. For the second one, all you really need is a step. If you don't have a flight of stairs in your home, you can pretty much use anything that's stationary and not gonna move. Now, it does become a little more beneficial, especially when first trying this out, if you have a railing or something to hold onto. That may be a little more helpful in the beginning. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on single leg power. Power is incredibly important, like we just talked about, because we need to be able to generate strength quickly. This is one of my favorite movements to help do that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start with one leg on top of the stair. Now this is the leg that's gonna be doing most of the work. So if you wanna start with the side that maybe isn't as painful or you maybe feel stronger with to get the rhythm of it, that's totally fine. So I'm putting one leg up and then I'm gonna step back with the back foot just so you are a couple feet in between each leg. If you're too close, this may not work as well. And then if you're way too far back, this may not work as well either. So get comfortable in trying to find your foot position and what foot position works well for you. What we're gonna do now is you're going to lean in. So this knee bends, then you're gonna push back. You're going to lean, so this knee bends, and then you're going to push back with this front leg. Notice my back leg really isn't doing anything. It's not bending. We're not going into a lunge. It's just allowing me to propel my weight forward, still straight. You can let your heel come off if you don't have the ankle mobility to keep it on the floor. Then what I'm really doing is I'm pushing back with this front leg. You may feel those muscles working in your hips. You may feel the muscle working in your thigh. We're just bending forward and then coming back. Now, one thing, if you are too close, like if your legs are too close together, you're bending, you may get your knee going way far ahead. This isn't necessarily a bad thing to have your knees go over your toes, but if you're dealing with some knee pain and some sensitivity in your knees, that may not feel great to you at first, which is why I like to step back a little bit because if you watch, now if I lean forward, my knee is relatively in line with my toes. I can go a little bit over and that usually feels okay. Then you're gonna push back. Now when you're first starting, you can just bend it a little bit and push back until you start to feel more comfortable getting that deeper knee bend. The goal is to be able to get to that deeper knee bend, use that thigh, use the backs of your legs, use your hips, and be able to push yourself back. Doing anywhere between eight to 12 of these at a time, make sure you do it on each side, can be helpful. Do it just once a day, then you can progress up to twice a day once you start feeling much better at it, and then continue on that way to help you stand up from those lower surfaces. 
Okay, so now you have the two movements. Now it's time to practice. We have to make it consistent. If you start off with the standing up quickly, those squats from the chair that you feel comfortable with, eight to 10 repetitions, five to eight if you're using weights each day. Then adding in that forward lean and push back, that bending and push back. Anywhere between eight to 10 of those a day can be very, very helpful in your journey to getting better at getting up from lower surfaces. Now, if you want to take this a step further, if you want to build strength in the right areas and be able to move in ways that your arthritic joints actually like, and if you haven't tried the free four day arthritis friendly workout challenge, I highly, highly, highly recommend you do that. All you have to do is go to arthritisadventure.com forward slash challenge to sign up. It's totally free. You get four full length workouts with me to get you on your way to walking longer distances, walking for hours like you used to, getting up and down from the floor, going up and down the stairs, even with arthritis. You can do this. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.